Right, so we're going to be dealing with mirror casters primarily now. We, we need to we need to get the other more open, and I'm not sure how to do that. Although, my my biggest fear is that uh, I can't get it open at all, and so I, I want to try a few things before trading in knife, because I, I know I can to get it open with the knife. I don't want to use it, but I'm still not hundred percent sure if I'm if I'm not. Um, if I want to avoid right. using it, no matter what the cost. Have I missed something? I, I don't think I have, but I might have. The thing about the, this more that troubles me is that it, it, I don't think the text describing it is exactly like what the other one had. It, it seems to indicate like what it wants is something nearby, but what it is, that's what I can figure out. All right. but there there aren't that many things here. There's prisoner, mutants, mutants. Very different type of mutants. But what is it? Is it uh, I don't think Right the game did something there. Yeah. Yeah. I would say it's either Delny or Prisoner, assuming it's uh Delny or Area, assuming it's actually looking at what it wants. But I think that's assuming quite a bit. I don't know what this mole eats, but I'm not getting any closer. Absolutely. Doesn't want me, that's for certain. Absolutely. Anything new? No. Action. Here I come. It's not an item. I don't think it ever is an item. It's always something organic. Sure enough. Or part of a person. The mall remains tightly shut. As you approach, the voices of the bloom begin to chitter and hiss in your ears. The tendrils don't seem to notice you. They continue to sway and stretch, perhaps catching a faint scent of something that appeals to them. Yeah, that would I, I think that it indicates that whatever it wants is something something here. Similar to how the captain of the mercenary group knew it was one of him. I listen. But it's it's not enough. You can't detect any patterns. So what is it? Any help? Oh, we have a few other options. We can talk about people we've encountered. Uh, tell me about little Neelish. Uh, mutants. Life isn't easy for them, but the stories I have, I have from parties in Neelish would peel your ears up. But they're not all shameless hedonists. More as the pity. I was once mugged by a man with three arm arms eyes while his kneecap kept an eye on the alley. Right. Uh, what do you know about Parson Flint? He's a smiling parasite. He deals in despair and has a lot of loyal loyal customers. That's that the man. Braska? Raska's all right for a paid neckbreaker. You know where you all are with her at least. Does her job, cares for her people, keeps her word. I guess Nords. That's more than I can say for a lot of the honest commanders I've known. 
Hmm. You know Artaglia from before? Oh yes, knew him during my brief stint in the Endless War. Did not cover himself with honor, but then no one did there, and if they had, no one would have noticed what with their shrieking and madness. He's always been a bit more a bit more rose and prone to drink. It might be might be because he cares or did once. What's on your mind? Absolutely. Back again so soon. Yeah, anything new. Doesn't look like it. Asked about Angul nights before. There's nothing new or Action. interesting that Here anyone knows. Don't mind. You are the problem, Delmi. You are the fucking problem. Isn't gonna lead to anywhere. Action! Here I come! I doubt it would be Garakoto. How would you even beat the last thing? Uh, not nothing new. I'd need at least some sort of a hint. It's going after an emotion or what? Just wanting to eat someone's legs for no particular reason. Hmm. Suppose there's the ship, but there's nothing in there anymore. And I. I don't see it. I think this is uh, more of a gameplay yes. limitation or game mechanical limitation, programming limitation. I just, I basically have not trip, tripped the initial step of whatever it is, at least finding out the, what it wants, so I can't do anything about it. Yes. Ready. Hmm. Right. So we'll go back where we started from. Uh, I can't do this. Alternatively, just cut it open. Ah, uh, yeah. Unfortunate situ no situation. Mind, because we already had the key to our to the solution, but game says no. All right. We can trade this for a mere caster that belong to the changing god. Look That's just got to be worth something. It should not affect our combat capabilities in any way. At worst, we'll lose a side quest. I'm ready. Place the transdimensional scalpel on the offering table. As you set the scalpel on the slab, a mass of piney bloom tendrils rise from its surface where they've been lurking amongst the offerings. They wrap themselves around and around the knife, growing and thickening, enveloping it in scabrous flesh. In a matter of moments, the scalpel is gone. You hear a fierce chittering noise in your ears, and you get the distinct sense that the bloom is pleased. Other bloom flesh tendrils disengage themselves from the mirror caster and you lift it from the slab. 
The device is cylindrical in shape, wrought from azure steel with curved, sharpened projections on all sides, making it difficult to hold. It feels familiar to you, like a family heirloom that you've only heard about in stories but always pictured in your mind. Somehow you know that it is a mere caster. Okay, let's look at the, through our inventory quickly. Kaleidoscopic Mirkaster. I think I've used this, right? Uh, I'm quickly through looking through is there a specialization plus plus things here. Although that's for perception, not lore, so I don't know why, why that would help. I, I I don't think I've looked through every item though. Look through these, definitely. Hmm. This not, no, yeah. Casket that all remains of a forgotten people that once lived and prospered in the ninth world. You're holding a small box in your hands. It is shaped like a casket and beautifully ornamented, with writing etched into the lid in markings that resemble no language you know of. By contrast, the casket is minimalist, even bare on the inside. A single pastel lies within. Inspect it. A skillful, skillful hand etched these markings deep into the lid. The glyphs are intricate and strike you as ideogrammatic, but you can't decipher them. And yet they seem oddly familiar, as if you've seen them before. Not in this life than another. Ooh, this is a tough one. A memory blossoms, but it is hard to comprehend what you're seeing. It is as if it is seen through the eyes of someone not human. Do you speak this language or do you not? You see your fingers trace a pattern on a set of glyphs very similar to those on the casket's lid. Almost reflexively, you repeat the pattern on the lid. The casket lid opens, revealing that a small blue figure with a long spindly limbs has now appeared. Lying atop of the pastel, opening some of its many eyes to look up at you. The figure clambers up to sit on the edge of the casket. Several eyes are focused on you, blinking at irregular intervals. He starts speaking in a high wailing tone. You can't understand a word he is saying. Recognizing this fact, he picks up the pastel and reaches it up toward you. Eat it. As you consume the pastel, a burning smell immediately overwhelms all your senses. Flashes of memories try to force their way into your mind, but they are too alien to understand. After some time, your mind settles down, leaving blurry memories and hazy details. Yet, somehow you have gained a full cognizance of the people that this casket memorializes. You understand that the people memorialized by this casket were a secluded people, now long gone, eradicated by a cataclysmic event. You feel the nature of their existence as if it were a tangible being. They did not despair at the end as the end approached, secure in their vast stores of knowledge, wrapped in the belief that reason would find a way out. This casket pro preserving their memory was made by them. While it did not save them, it does preserve an aspect of their nature. While you do not know them, you will remember them. As the, cognizized, as the cognizance ends, you find the creature gone, casket now burning with a cold fire in your hands. In mere moments, it is nothing but ashes drifting away between your fingers. Okay. Yeah, let, let's not discard it. Currently use this, and this, and this, probably.
Yeah, I don't think I've used the astronomical mirror caster or the azure steer mirror caster. Uh, astronomical. As soon as you place this device in the palm of your hand, the sta stately dance of the clockwork planets mounted upon it become a frantic spinning reel. In the heart of the thing, a com contemplative hum grows, as though the machine itself were starting the path of the planets above it. Listening, you hear shadows of words with within that sound, speaking of the mirror within this device. Inspect it. You study the world of the planets in your palm. Your eyes might be deceiving you, but it does seem as though some of the orbs are slightly transparent, and that tinier planets are orbiting within them. So what is this? Blue. Once you had two dozen words for all the hues and shades, metaphors to glaives as capes and courtesans' eyes. Now the sky is just blue. The ground is stone, the man before you fat. Now all is vague and drab like the memorialist sees you stopped, and he holds as well. Let's have a rest then, he says, passing you a bottle of fortified water as he catches his breath. You knew a word for that too, this drink they brew in the Valley of Dead Heroes. Gone. We aren't far from his cenotaph, the fat man wipes his brow. Deep in his pocket, you ha your hand deep in your pocket. Your hand feels for the round tin that holds the worms. Your fingers clutch it tight as they do. They brush a piece of paper. Are you, are you his shadow? The memorialist asks abruptly. Calagat Anbor, I mean, the one you came to see. Without waiting for a response, he barrels onward. We thought he'd cast his shadow among his own kind. We reasoned that with the Tabath gone, his line was lost forever. He stops and flushes, bl flushes more deeply, then hastily, with a sigh, nods. Uh, but shadows fall where they will, as they will. Kalakat Anbor, Tabath, shadows. They flit around the edges of your mind, escaping your grasp, but the worms, they are well within reach. Shall we continue, pilgrim? The memorialist asks to break the silence. One more short hike will do it. Uh, your body is ready. Your mind is not. Hmm. Examine the paper in your pocket. You slip mm, the crisp, neatly folded sheet from your pocket and carefully open it. I will want the worms, but I will be strong. I will wonder what I have lost, but they will only rob me further. I will endure and I will build the tower of my intellect anew. Kalagat Anbor will furnish the material. The mindly, not the worms, will be my tool. The mindly. A dead eye trader from Harev sold it for the last of your once great heap of prizes and bounties. Now it's slung from your belt, a hideous mass that with a synth tube hanging off of it like some ka kathoshi tentacle. Right. Examine the tin. The tin is old and unremarkable, scuffed and dented, but sturdy enough. It opens easily. Inside is a clump of bristly worms, blind and thin, barely moving. Your fingers itch and tremble. Your nostrils flare. You no longer know their name, but you know exactly how to use them. Careful not to spill the precious contents, you close the tin and slide it back to your pocket. Snort a worm. Seriously? Kalagat Anvor shadows the bar? The memorialist regards you skeptically as if he expects to be the butt of a joke. As he looks in your eyes, however, he softens. We live in a world of darkness, Pilgrim, and each of us is just a shadow of the one of the great heroes buried here in this valley. But there's a light that shines behind the world. To know it, we shadows must measure ourselves against the heroes who cast us, and thus learn the light that lives beyond. 
He takes a swig from the canteen. I thought you set out on this pilgrims to visit at the tomb of Kalakat Anvor because you were his shadow, that you wanted to stand before him and find enlightenment. Am I wrong? Are you his shadows or not? Uh, I don't know. The memorial is not. That's how it is. I've met pilgrims who swore they were lords and ladies of old, but when they reached the grave, wept in shame. But I've also seen a novice stumble across her hero by mere chance. If you are, if you find Galakad Anvor, you will know who you are or are not. He gestures to the hilltop toward which you've been hiking. Just over that rise in is the Mount Monument. As for his tomb, you said that the cenotaph would lead the way. I can't see how, but for the famous puzzle breaker of Sega's Glyphs, I'm sure it will be simple. Your mind might still be clouded, but at least now the form of things has become clear. Why would I snort a worm? Let's go. I want to see the cenotaph. Maybe it'll help me uh, think clearly or mem remember. I don't see how it would help me now. So. I want to see the cenotaph. As you follow the memorialist up the crumbling path, he carries on about a time when all the roads in the valley were as well paved as the streets in Sega's Cliffs. Then, reaching the hill crest, he falls into reverential silence. When you catch up, you see the sight that awed him, even for the thousandth time, a clutch of exquisite monuments. Ranging from a vast to mi vast to miniature, from abstract to eerily lifelike, the memorialist points to one of them, a many-sided slab of black stone, and gestures for you to follow. This must be the cenotaph of Kalakad Anabor, the bath general and would-be world conqueror. Up close, the cenotaph is not so remarkable. Its faces are adorned with gruesome, stylish reliefs depicting the Tabath and their jaggerlith mounds trampling the corpses of their foes. Neat geometric cliffs encircle the panels. Like the images themselves, they are embossed rather than engraved. The memorialist clears his throat. Of course, Kalakad Anvor isn't here. Like the other heroes, his body is in one of the cells in the catacombs beneath us. He gnaws at the monument. This is its own sort of shadow. All memorials are. As your guide mumbles something about the difference between expression, impression, and reality, your attention returns to the cenotaph itself. Examine. No doubt some historian would tell the tale behind each panel. What doomed the race that above annihilated here? What grand battle was waged there? But to you, they're just an ugly blur that tucks at shameful memories without ever quite dragging them to the surface. This is not the knowledge you came for. On one side of the cenotaph, there's something else, an obscene picture, crudely etched rather than raised, its edges scorched black. The memorial clears his throat awkwardly. A graffito from just after the bath were beaten hard with a plasma torch by a bitter nano. He coughs again, and the uh, visual pun of the Black Three must be obvious. At least we can't possibly fix the damage. Study the glyphs. What seems at first individual glyphs are far more complex. Smaller symbols assembled into larger patterns, linked into chains, twined and twisted into knots. Never a tangle or ramble. It is more mathematical or scientific notation than language. Running your fingers across the glyphs, you see that they shine briefly under your touch and fade. Perhaps there is a formula here to be solved, a structure, a higher hidden order to be found. Perhaps here you could catch glimmers of the Tabas military mastery. But the sieve of your mind holds nothing, and any secret slips right through. Maybe I should snort a worm. As you struggle to decipher the symbols, the memorial series over. Uh, this one means war, 
he says, illuminating a cluster repeated endlessly on the cenotaph. There's one death. He picks out others and shows how the ideogram for sol soldier weaves into warband, which can in turn mesh into column or our army. Excitement grows in his voice as he leads you to another panel and shows you the unique markings that compose the pattern for underspine. A high council, we think, or god. But he knows what seems to be a structure to the writing, a pattern within the pattern. Would it be a puzzle to open the way to Kalakad and Vor? He asks expectantly. You have no answer for his hopes. Uh, study the basin. Cart into the Tenotest glint is a wide shallow bowl, perfectly smooth, perfectly ovoid. In its center is a small drain that runs into the monument. Around its rim is a geometric pattern, simple and composed of a single recurrent shape. You recognize the symbol blood, of course. Of course, it could be nothing else. Your guide keeps back from the basin as you examine it and uh, shares no thoughts. Spill some blood into the basin. Sacrifice the memorialist. Huh. Try to find a correct sequence of the glyphs. You trick yourself into thinking that you can crack whatever code the stone holds, but neither logic nor luck makes any headway. The glyphs shine and fade, but nothing happens. Given the endless combinations, not even the persistence you had of old could break through this lot. Okay, can I spill some blood into the base? Beneath your guy's worried gaze, you nick your wrist and drizzle some blood into the bowl. Nothing comes of it. Whatever flows through your veins will not slake the stone's thirst. I'm snorting a worm because I want to see for one what the fuck they do. And maybe I can get more out of this before I sacrifice the memorialist. Gripping a grub between two fingers, you slip it into your nostril and breathe as deeply as you can. Worm works with you, eager to reach its meal. You feel it squirm the last stretch and then pain like a knife stabs your brain. And you know the worm is feeding, eating grey matter and kissing neurostimulant, letting your mind reconquer the vast territories it has lost. Nemotoad, that's what they're called, not worms. And Cerulean, that's the sky's color, not blue. The rush of understanding overwhelms you. You read the world's unwritten words, devised stratagems, unraveled mysteries. Your brain races with the speed through brought on by the worm's piss, and through your thoughts run the bad symbol, spinning, twisting, combining and dividing. There is a meaning here. Tangled amid the knotted cliffs, and your mind is unraveling it, surely, but not fast enough. Your thoughts become painful, painfully, shamefully slow, and the puzzle you felt so close to breaking is now seems impregnable. Another worm, thus one more, and your mind, honed like a sword, will slice through the scales. You're sure of it, so sure of it, you find yourself sniffing in anticipation, a predator on the scent. <sighs> yeah, do it. Because uh, I think I, I basically sacrificed the memorials and that, that uh, appears is not the correct way to do things. I basically just fucked. I also think that this uh, snorting too many worms might be the end of me. If another worm and the Senate has puzzle crumbles before you. It seems so simple now, so obvious. A prayer woven with the story, a prayer of submission to the truth, the truth of war and blood and death. You need but to touch the glyphs and the way will open before you. Uh, sure, correct sequence. Their fingers race across the glyphs, which now do not fade as you progress, rather with each touch they grow brighter and brighter. You can hear the excited gasp from your guide as you reach the last side of the cenotaph. 
With a flourish, you press the final symbols. The skein ends in war, of course. Blue light pours forth from the center tap, forming a kind of shimmering portal. Through it, you see hints of a room. His tomb. His tomb, whispers the memorialist. A smile sneaks onto your face as you see the way before you. The other scout examine the portal. Some sort of room, rather than blue light, lies behind the portal. Yeah, we have to go through. You step toward the wary energy field and stare at the blue tinged tome beyond, resting place of Kalaghat Anabor. The memorialist remains at a respectful distance. I will pray that your hero awaits within Pilgrim, and that you find enlightenment at his side. Harry no longer you punch through. Though I didn't murder him for I would have murdered him for not for nothing, basically. The tomb's walls are bare stone, as is the, its floor. In fact, the room is empty except for the sarcophagus that sits at its center. A crystalline numenera that hums with ancient in, indefi, indefatigable energy. Bathed in the portal's light, the room feels almost underwater, a sensation heightened by the air's unusual weight. Study the sarcophagus. The sarcophagus is divided into three parts, a wide beer and elongated pentagonal coffin and a curved lens like a lid. The beer is decorated with familiar glyphs, you recognize war, death and purity among them, but these designs hold little interest. They are just catchwords and they will teach you nothing of the devout genius. The coffin, or its part, is a single hunk of milky aquamarine. Its lid is less opaque and through it you can see the corpse's silhouette. Most importantly, you notice a simple locking mechanism holding the two together. Opening the sarcophagus would be a straightforward matter. Uh, I think I'll snort another worm. Although, if they... I'm thinking of traps and things like that, but at the same time, I could have just not opened the front door. I, I think that's... Uh, I'll just open the sarcophagus. A few twists of the coffin's cylindrical lock and the leak rises up with a hiss of icy age-old air. As the mist clears, you see at last the face of Calacat Anabor. You feel nothing at the sight of him, ever having known the terror of his trium triumvirate. His inhuman features are slightly mummified but well preserved. His ebon tabard is faded with, e with time that even the sarcophagus could not keep at bay. But it is his head that matters, not his clothes. His head, and its brain, and the inside sheath within, an edge keen enough to cut through the tangle of your own failures. Use the mind blink. Once you slip the helmet over your face, you can't see and can barely breathe. Trapped in the mask's damp darkness, you fumble for the socket of the base of the corpse's skull. At last you find it, and still struggling, you try to bring the conduit tube into contact. Suddenly, the darkness explodes with light, the nebulous patchwork glow of your own mind, and beyond it, the glorious mandala formed by the thoughts of Galagad and Bor. A moat emerges from the pattern, and a confused voice whispers, You are not the underspine. Almost instantly, the geometry of his mind transforms into a star fortress, from whose bastions dagger-like shapes stream forth. You will not taint my thoughts. The path voice rumbles as his fleet soars toward you. There is no time to try and reason with it, if that would ever be even ever be possible. It seems madness that he fears you could pollute his mind when merely fending off his force shall be at at the limits of your worm ways of will.
a monk your own attack. You came here to hone your mind. You came here to hone your mind. Perhaps this is the way to do so. Fend him up. You came here to rebuild your mind, not to offer it up for Tabath Pillady. Let him in. You came here to fill the vast gaps in your mind, and perhaps this would be the swiftest way. Yeah, I am. Uh, flip a coin. I, I don't think I'm going to just let him in. Or I, I'm not sure if I can mount my... The, uh, it seems madness that he fears you could pollute his mind when merely fending off his force shall be at the limits of your worm wasted will. So I think we're going to fend him off. The worm wasted, wasted will, uh, yeah. We use two worms. Uh, fend him off. You came here to rebuild your mind, not to offer it to up for Tabath pillaging. You need to shut the ragged fringes of your mind, focusing and contracting yourself into a tight, hard core bound by its will to live. The cutting thoughts of Kalak Anbor slash at the perimeter of your defense, probing, testing, seeking entry, but to no avail. At length they withdraw to the past own pattern, for now you are safe. The texture of the general's mind ripples as he arranges his thoughts, absorbs what his skulls have scraped from your mind. At last, like a messenger, a spear splits off from the pattern and flows before you. Pilgrim, the word is spat out. I have seen the secrets you keep from yourself, the endless battle you meant to end, and the red wreckage your solution has left behind. I am unmoved. I killed more, lost more, and fell further without surrendering to truth. The spear shimmers and flattens into a kind of mirror. You have come because you would prove yourself again through me, by me. The thoughts flow slowly backwards, but I am not your underspine. Um. Study his mind. You see a white crescent of Ural Reavers, ready to sweep down on an unnumbered but unfaced band of Tabat scouts. You know they will fight free because Anvor knew it then, before the battle even began. You see the city of Sagas Cliffs rising above the plains like a beacon, a treasure, a false icon to be smashed to pieces. In the depths of the general's mind, jagged, violent thoughts seem to be mustering as if for war. At the moment, they are scattered and in some er disarray. Okay, tell me about the underspine. Kalak Anvor's mind grows still, with faint flashes of contemplation flickering across its surface. The guardian of the Tabath soul. His mind darkens and storms. To use your words befouls the meaning of my thoughts. It is obscene that you call this tongue truth. Silence. Then, the underspine is a filter through which our minds flow, cleansing us of distraction, subversion, novelty, and doubt. The darkness dances to the edges of his will. You cannot comprehend. Uh, what did you see in me? His mind ripples with amusement, fear, vanity, weakness, deceit. There is a long silence. It is your duty to know yourself and to be yourself. A thin si silver sliver of thought shoots out from his mind and stabs you into your own. It is an image, a battlefield, strewn with countless corpses and shattered war machines. A regal woman stands beside you, rigid with rays. Hustle breaker indeed, she sneers. The image, be it memory or Tabath deception, fades away and Skalakad Anabor offers no more. Hmm. Want to learn the trick of Tabath warfare? He would probably Take that as an offense. Call it a trick. 
I want to feel the emptiness in my mind. Well, I don't think I can attack his mind and blunder, blunder his knowledge. I don't think my will is strong enough. I want to you to feel the emptiness in my mind. Really? I'm not sure if these options are good. Study his mind again. You see a city, underground, the tunnel walls and vaulting chambers adorned with carvings of fallen enemies. You see battles, endless battles, the memories sorted with meticulous care, conjoined by formations employed, foes faced, weapons wielded, terrain accommodated. It seems a catalogue without end. In the depths of the general's mind, jagged, violent thoughts seem to be mustering as if for war. At the moment, they are scattered and in some disarray. Right, so... He's preparing. Maybe talking to him allows him to prepare. But attacking basically, I don't know what I'm even trying to achieve here really. And attacking without real provocation it would be very unlike my character. So even though it might be the option to go with, it's not what I want to go with now. Although my options sort of suck. I want to learn the trick of Tabath warfare. Do I? Where did that come from? And, and calling it a trick seems to be sort of dismissive about it. I want you to feel the emptiness in my mind is also, I'm not sure if I want that in any way. I'm not sure what would be involved in that, so... Uh, I, I don't like any of these options really. I don't think I can break the link either. Feel the emptiness. I think that's maybe more appropriate. Also, taking into consideration what this this guy's brain is basically melting away. The general's mind darkens. Its defenses harden. Conquest all its own doom. Risk is too great. More battles, bloodshed, butchery flash before you. In the depths of the general's mind, jagged, violent thoughts seem to be mustering as of war, the ranks are growing. Yep, this is. Hmm. Trick of Tabath warfare. A purple ripple runs across the mind of Kalakat Anamor, and you feel the harsh rasp of Tabath laughter. The weak will and degenerate always dream that the great prevail of tricks or cheats or chance. His thoughts array themselves in interlinked chains of blue and black. But war disabuses tricksters of their vanity. Failure falls upon those who falls by battle, and victory is the stamp of truth. Chains stretch and run throughout, throughout the patterns of his mind. We did not master deceit or even war. We mastered our own authentic selves. We triumphed by philosophy, not strategy. More battles, okay. It is a vast force enough to encircle your own mind completely. Yeah, we are basically going to lose this probably. Tell me more about your philosophy. A small cube of ideas detaches from the pattern of the general's mind and unfolds before you. In all systems, the variables is subordinate to the constant. The measure of things must be fixed. Lines of thought stab out from the unfolded Eidolon, probing your mind like outriders. 
You do not comprehend. It long rearranges itself into a pyramid. When one stands at the utmost peak of the highest mountain, an advance is no better than a retreat. All change is a decline. Again he probes, again you are found wanting. Do not fall, one must say, there is no more ascent. Here I stay. Many have so spoken, but the Tabath alone spoke truly, resisting the vanity of progress. Yeah, we're fucked. Ah, tell me more. Given the sudden jacket uh, configuration of his mind, Anwar seems affronted by your stupid question. At last, he sends forth a sphere of a in answer. The conqueror's sword flexes, but always straightens to its proper form. The sphere sh shimmers and turns golden. All great peoples have found mighty truths, but always they let their truths mingle with falsehood and frivolity until their folkways become fractious, friable. We alone held to the, our truth with unflinching conviction. The sphere stretches into a toroid. Words, faith, art, all was held pure and unchanging within the underspine, a perfect eternal purpose spanning all generations. What can stand before such a united trust? Hmm. Well, your kind has been wiped out. As you tell the Tabat General of his kind's demise, the geometric per perfection of his thoughts fractures for a moment. Not quite into chaos or organic shapes, but into sharp shards that cannot quite reform. Some of these needles jab into your own mind, probing, confirming that you tell the truth. I see. Eventually, the fragments of his mind reform, though the ranks of its guardians seem thin. At least they are saved from the corruption of change. To be frozen forever in cold death is better fate than the seamy, teeming welter of your city. The other, he's still very, very much going to fuck me over if this goes into some kind of a fight of wheels again. Wheels again. I, I think I basically lost this because I chose poorly. I probably should have uh, tried to forcefully, at basically, not necessarily attack directly, but try to weaken him a little bit then attack instead of have this long conversation okay what about the philosophy again I've already uh, this is gonna end up in a catastrophe I, I don't have good options left and I'm uh, basically underdog now dark wedges wheel themselves into a wall shielding the inner citadel of the general's mind you are not fit to know more of our thoughts you would warp them in your twisted vessel, or else your mind would burst in trying to contain them. There is no way to pierce the barrier he has raised, and it is clear his mind will not be changed. Yep. I... I lost this. Yep. I even break the mind link again. Anvor strives to bind you, to encircle and ensnare your mind for a final fatal battle. With no hope of prevailing in such a ma match, you struggle to slip free, but it is too late. His thoughts have slid inside you, wrecking havoc. You are forced to yield whole swaths of yourself to the invader in hopes of saving the smallest core of identity. Something survives, and pulls off the mind link's reeking mask. It is you, or at least part of you, neither the best nor the worst, merely that which fled fastest. Maimed and dazed, you stagger forth from the tomb without a backward glance at the path towards. Blue. The portal behind you, the sky above you, it's a good round word. You don't need or want a different one. Blue. You roll the world around the vast cavern of your mind. Enjoying the sound of it, 
Enjoying the cool breeze on your skin, the fine monument all about you. The rest is gone for good and for the better. So basically if you place this smartly, you probably could ensure that this person is of sound mind, but now he's fucked forever. There's nothing I can do about Fine. it. 